Could you tell us your name and what you do for a living? My name is Adam Paul and I'm a power lifter. Power lifting isn't just a hobby for me, it's a way of life. When people try to talk to me about anything other than power lifting, like, it just goes in one ear and out the other. Honestly, if you're not about this life, you're dead to me. What are some of your biggest accomplishments in life? Yeah, my all-time best, a 247.5 kilo squat, 137.5 kilo bench, and I deadlifted 247.5 kilos. So it says here your workout sessions last four hours. Does being in the gym for four hours at a time put a strain on your family life? What? When Alan's not at the gym, he is always on his phone. It's become a serious problem. And I used to think that maybe he has eyes for someone else, or there's someone else in his life that he's not telling me about. And so one day I looked over his shoulder while he was on his phone, and he's literally just watching videos of himself lifting weights. Like, that's all he does is watch videos of himself lifting weights. Like, why? I don't even follow power training, but like, I know enough to know that he's not even that good. What do you like doing with your dad when you guys play together? Uh, my dad doesn't really play with me very much uh, because his back hurts or he, because he has a really important day at the gym. Do you guys do anything together? Sometimes we'll play video games because he likes to sit down, but he always falls asleep because he's, he's really tired because he works really hard in the gym. I want my kids to see the struggle that I go through. I want them to see what hard work looks like. I try to lead by example so that one day when my son's in my position, he knows how to be a good power lifter. He thinks that he's like the epitome of health because he works out for like four hours at a time, but like he's overweight, he eats a lot of candy and energy drinks. He's always tired and he's always in pain. He doesn't even work a real job. Like, okay, he had to go to the doctor and the doctor told him his cholesterol was 315 and his response was, hell yeah, brother. Like what? That's abnormally high. People don't understand the struggles that I go through and the sacrifices that I make. I literally missed my son's birthday because I was not about to rush my bench press session. Like, I start my bench press session at 2 p.m. His birthday is at 5. I'm not going to rush through trying to make myself better for what? Just for some birthday cake? I just don't relate to normal people. My name is Alan Thrall here at Untamed Strength Gym in Sacramento, California. And in this video, I want to discuss how my approach to training has evolved over the past several years. But first, some preamble. That opening scene was obviously satire, tongue in cheek really. As much as I like teasing different strength sports, it's all in good fun, kind of like teasing my kid brother. If you got a chuckle out of it, you probably know someone vaguely like that, or maybe you saw parts of yourself in that skit. I know I did. The truth is, powerlifting is awesome. When I first discovered it, it changed my life for the better, so much so that I wanted to pursue it as an occupation and open up a gym teaching it. Powerlifting has given so many people purpose, drive, motivation, and direction in the gym. The passion for pursuit of strength is something that I wish everyone could feel. When I see people who don't lift weights, I wish I could give some of the passion that I have to them because it feels so good. I know how it makes me feel. But if you've been in the powerlifting space for long enough, you've probably seen some of the extremes and the sometimes ridiculous narratives. Recently, I've been asked the question, what has changed most in your training over the last 10 years? And I'm answering that in this video. I am in no way trying to say that this is how you should think or that I have it all figured out or that I'm better than anyone else because I think this way. You don't have to agree with me. You don't have to feel bad about disagreeing with me. While there are some commonalities of why we all lift weights, everyone has their own reasons. Yours does not need to align with mine. The reason I am sharing this is because sometimes we get lost and jaded unsure of the next step. Something that was so shiny at one point is kind of dull now. Maybe something I say in this video strikes a chord with you. Now, before I get to my list, you might be thinking, bruh, I already know how your training has changed over the last 10 years because you post all of it on YouTube. I actually got the comment recently, LOL, this dude literally jumps from one thing to the next every year. And after I cried a little bit, I agreed with him, sort of. Powerlifting, strongman, weightlifting, starting strength, barbell medicine, running, bulking, cutting, bodybuilding. But the thing is, I still follow all of that. I still do all of that in some capacity. And it's still all under the same umbrella of improving my physical abilities. Minus the running, it's all related to lifting weights. And none of it has been completely dropped from my routine. I've just learned to incorporate all of it in a routine that I like. So... 
in this video, I'm not going to talk about how my sets and reps and my programming specifically has changed over the last 10 years, more about how my approach has changed. Number one, I am more flexible with my movements. If I don't want to do it, I don't. I used to overhype certain movements. I would place so much emphasis on the movement that I cared more about that movement than the benefits I was getting from it. Let's take bench press, for example, and buckle up because I have a lot to say. I would bench press often because I thought that the bench press was the king of upper body exercises. I mean, no one lifts weights and doesn't bench press, right? I always wanted to be able to bench press more so that when people asked me how much I bench press, I could tell them something that would hopefully impress them. And since I was competing in powerlifting, I needed to bench. There was no way around it. But truth be told, I never liked bench press. Even when I bench pressed in the high school football weight room, I never liked it. I like training upper body, I just didn't care for the bench press. The only time that I've liked bench press was for a few months, a few months out of my entire life, when I actually liked bench press. It was when I was at my peak bench press strength because I finally felt like my bench press was respectable, which shows that I only cared about what other people thought of my bench. Fast forward to now, and I still don't like bench, so I don't do it anymore. I have not bench pressed in about four months since I posted that video, my last video updating what my program looked like. Haven't bench pressed since then, and I don't miss it. I don't like the movement very much. I have to be incredibly specific in my training to get those numbers to budge. I've got to do lots of bench and only bench several days per week. I don't want to do that. My pec tendon or my shoulder gets irritated when I do bench press more frequently, And I don't believe that the bench press is a bad movement. This is just something I've noticed. It's something that I seem susceptible to. Even when my bench press was at its peak, I couldn't do bodyweight dips without my sternum hurting or having some shoulder pain. So it seemed like the bench press was only helping my bench press. It wasn't making me more jacked than other movements could have. It wasn't making me healthier in any way. In fact, it was reducing my quality of life because I would develop pain every once in a while. It wasn't making me any money, unfortunately. And it wasn't necessarily making me stronger. Of course, it was increasing my bench press, which is one way to measure strength. But my dips and my push-ups were not as strong then as they are now. So I guess it depends on how you measure strength. Now, around four months ago, when I decided to stop benching, and this isn't indefinitely, it's just till I feel like I want to start benching again. But when I decided to stop benching, I asked myself this question. If I was the last man on earth, Would I still lift weights and exercise? No doubt, easy, yes. That's easy for me, yes. But if I was the last man on earth, would I still bench press? No, I wouldn't. I would do dips and push-ups and overhead press and maybe some dumbbell stuff because I really like doing that stuff. And then it hit me. I don't have to bench press with a barbell. I can do other things that I enjoy doing, stuff that I look forward to doing. I'll end there. End bench press rant. I've been following the program that Natural Hypertrophy wrote for me last year, and every few months I'll rotate the movements. At this point right now, sometimes my movements will just be a muscle group or a pattern like triceps or squat, knee flexion. As long as I'm training that muscle or that pattern, I'm happy. This isn't to say that I'm all over the place and constantly varying my workouts. I am a man of routine, but if I can't or don't want to high bar back squat today, I can front squat, I can do split squats or belt squats, and I don't feel like I'm doing less. I don't feel like I'm taking the easy way out. Number two, I focus on technique now more than I used to. My technique used to be performance-based. I would do these things to lift the heaviest weight possible. High arch, this exact grip width, maximum leg drive on the bench press, etc., Now, I'm more focused on doing the movement for its intended purpose. If I'm doing high bar squats, I want my technique to look the same on the first rep and the last rep. The only thing that changes is bar speed. Once I start to bend over more, I start using my back to stand up. Once I can no longer keep my knees forward as I stand up, the set is done. I stop there. And this is why rep ranges have been helpful. Six to ten reps gives me a range that I can work in. If I want to use my back more, if I want to use my hips more, I'll just do a low bar squat. But if I'm doing a high bar squat, I'm going to try to use my legs and not dump the weight onto my back as I'm standing up and as I'm getting tired and fatigued. When I was following more number-based training, 
uh, for example, today is 405 pounds for eight reps. I was determined to get eight reps, even if my technique wasn't great. And sometimes I would finish that set of eight and say, well, that felt like crap. Now, when I was benching on this hypertrophy program, I would never speed up my tempo, bounce the bar off my chest, let my butt come off the bench, focus more on leg drive than what my upper body is doing. I was focused more on actually using my upper body to move the weight. Once my upper body can't complete the rep, I'm done. I don't need to use other tricks just to get more reps. Sure, there are times when I'll swing some dumbbell curls, but for big movements especially, I'm focused on effort and technique, more so than just reps and weight on the bar. Another good example is push-ups. I'm not going to go faster or finish just shy of lockout just so I can get more reps in. I have been incorporating more strongman movements and sometimes weightlifting movements into my current routine. And there are times when performance is a higher priority, but for the majority of training, I do the movements exactly like I think they should be done. Number three, I don't get upset about how I'm feeling. Take it if it's there, leave it if it's not. The majority of times when I go into the gym, I feel great. I get good sleep. I don't eat like a garbage disposal. And I'm pretty good about managing stress inside of the gym and out. But there are times when I don't feel great. I'm tired. My mind's preoccupied with other things. I'm in a rush. I feel slow, not explosive, weaker than normal. As a more mature lifter, I realize that and I accept it. Now, I don't skip sessions. But if this one has to be on autopilot, so be it. Trying to artificially hype myself up is only going to make me feel worse, if not now, tomorrow, or the next day. I used to place so much importance on one training session that if I was feeling down, I would have to fight and claw to bring myself back up. Yeah, you know, I already had some coffee, but I'm still feeling tired. Guess I'll have to drink an energy drink. I'd have to watch motivational videos on YouTube. I'd have to play certain music just to light a fire under me. Well, that didn't always work. So I'd have to talk myself up. I'd have to get emotional before my session. If this sounds familiar to you, you know how draining this can be. It might be enough to get me to push through the session, but how am I going to feel after this session? How am I going to feel tomorrow? I remind myself now that this one training session is not the most important training session of my life. It's all about stringing together consistent sessions. That's what matters. I now look forward to my training sessions. I enjoy my training sessions. And I actually train now more than I used to, partly because I want to train six days per week. I don't want to just do three ball-busting all-out days. Number four, I care more about how the sessions make me feel. When my life was only about me, I could dump everything I had into a session. It didn't affect anyone but me. Now that I wear multiple hats as a father, husband, gym owner, coach, I need some juice for those other roles. I don't want my family to have a zombie dad who's too tired to do anything. I don't want my clients that I work with to see an unenthused trainer who looks like he needs a nap. In the past, if I got the sets, reps, and weight that I wanted, I was satisfied, even if it left me hurting, tired, or drained. Nowadays, I want to leave my sessions feeling better than when I started. I want to feel accomplished, proud, and healthy. The gym should improve my quality of life, not take away from it. Now, don't get it twisted. I still push myself very hard in the gym, and I enjoy the feeling of a tough workout. But it shouldn't come with the side effect of injury, aches, pain, frustration, or feeling like I'm not good enough. Number five, I don't care about weight on the bar. I used to think about weight on the bar strictly as numbers. I want to squat this number. I want to bench that number. I want to deadlift this number, and I want to total this number. Nowadays, I think about weight on the bar just as a way to adjust intensity. I'm shooting for eight reps. Was eight reps with this weight too easy? Yes. Increase the weight and do another set. Was eight reps with this weight too heavy? Yes. My form started falling apart. So I'm going to decrease the weight for the next set. I always have a goal intensity or RPE, like I'm going to take this set to failure or leave one to two reps in the tank, etc. I just don't care if the weight is 330 pounds or 300 pounds. As long as I'm being honest with the intensity and the effort, that's all that matters to me. I realize that some days I've got that dog in me and I really want to push hard today. So I'll take advantage of that. And this day might be heavier in terms of absolute weight on the bar. Whereas some days my dog is taking a nap and I'm not going the distance today. So it's a lighter day in terms of absolute weight on the bar. But the relative intensity, the proximity to failure is the same on these two days. It's just a weight on the bar that looks different. Number six, I don't need everything to be perfect. 
there were many times when I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that because things weren't perfect. I didn't eat enough throughout the day. I had a bad night of sleep. I had to help my friends move this weekend. I had to drive two hours this morning. I had to park across the parking lot and walk over 200 feet to the front door of the gym. I had to have these meals at these times. I had to train at this time of day. I needed this music, this much caffeine, and the list goes on. Sometimes in an attempt to make things perfect all the time, you only become fragile once things aren't perfect. I am rigid when it comes to my training sessions. I don't skip sessions, but what I do during those sessions can be flexible. Right now, I give my best effort given my current situation and I accept that end product. This is probably my biggest piece of advice for new parents. Number seven, I care more about my baseline strength than my peak strength. I have squatted 551 pounds. I've squatted 500 for five reps. I've deadlifted 600 pounds. I've benched 360 pounds. I've strict pressed 240 pounds. I've cleaned 335. I've jerked 325, all of which I cannot do right now as I'm recording this video. For me personally, it takes a lot of specific training to hit those peak numbers and even more to try and increase those numbers. I've never been one to retain that peak strength for very long. As soon as I pull back on training or I start introducing more variety and less specificity, those numbers drop. And right now, I am okay with that. I like being strong, don't get me wrong. I think that it's important for health, confidence, and overall progression. But I'm not putting all of my marbles into maximum strength on a couple of lifts. So long as my baseline of strength remains consistent or improves over time, I'm a happy lifter. I don't have exact numbers for what that looks like or even exact list of exercises, but I know what exercises I like, which ones I think are most valuable to me, and I know around where I think my strength should be. I'm more interested in what I can do from day to day and week to week. When I decide to compete for a competition, which I am right now, I'll focus more on peak strength for the contested events. Number eight, I just don't care as much. My powerlifting coach, Austin Baraki, once said, have you tried caring less? This sounds uninspiring. It sounds like what the youngins call coping, but it can actually be a freeing way to think. Every other post or comment on social media is someone disgusted with this, complaining about that, enraged about whatever. Have you tried caring less? Grown men will go to extreme lengths just to increase their squat from 275 pounds to 300 pounds. They'll gain weight when they know they shouldn't. They'll drag themselves through pain and injury. They'll force themselves under the barbell when they can't stand the thought of it. They'll grind their faces off trying to complete another set of squats at RPE 10. For what? 25 pounds on their squat? They don't look healthy. They don't even look like they lift. This is obviously wrecking their confidence. They're developing a bad relationship with exercise. They'll go through a reset climb, fail, reset cycle over and over again. They are only doing this because they've been told by someone on social media that they have to do this. All they get out of this is getting to write a number down in their logbook. And I'm all for goals. Accomplishing physical goals is great, but newsflash, hate to break it to you, it's only going to continue past that 300 pounds if you ever get it. I would hope that people lift weights because it makes them feel better. It improves their health. It improves body composition. It makes them more capable in life. It makes them more physically independent. And by lifting weights, you are leading by example for people who don't lift weights. Sometimes caring less about the minutia is liberating. Don't add unnecessary stress to your life. The gym should be your sanctuary, not your nine to five job that you hate. Thanks for watching and always remember, train on time.